Hey y'all, it's Arantula here. All right, so 2,000 subscribers, and I said I would make a Q&A, and sure enough, we did reach 2,000 subscribers, and it didn't take very long either. I'm kind of surprised by that, but you know what? You wanted a Q&A, you'll get a Q&A, and maybe a face reveal, who knows, whatever. Um, let's get on with the questions. I was asking for questions on my community tab as well as on my Discord server. If you haven't joined there yet, please do, because I would love to be able to talk with you more, and I think it'd just be fun to get to know my audience a little bit better. All right, um, now let's get started with all the questions and thank you for waiting up to this point. Alpha Toast and Elaine ask, how long have I been doing YouTube? At least since the year 2012. I have started three YouTube channels between then and now, however. One of them doesn't really exist anymore. Leon Reza asks, how did I get into Pokemon and what inspired me the challenge run? What's the story behind my name, Arantula? I first got into Pokemon because of watching Chuck and Conway Let's Play Fire Red version years ago. I was loving what I was watching even though back then it was something I never thought I'd ever get to experience as my parents are very religious and wanted to keep me away from anything they perceive as harmful to me. But it gave me a burning desire to play the games and I've been enamored with the series ever since. My name is actually a play on my real name, Aaron, and an enemy from my favorite video game of all time, Paper Mario of the Thousand Year Door. And there's an enemy from the game called Arantula, so I just added an A to the front of the enemy name and presto changeo. The Barrel asks, what's your favorite Pokemon and game? My favorite Pokemon, I'll admit, has always been varying and I've struggled to make up my mind. It varied from Espeon, the Chansey, to Inferno, even the Servine, but a Pokemon that I consistently have always adored ever since I first saw it was Lapras. So I'd have to say that Lapras is my favorite Pokemon of all time. As for my favorite game, I am very partial to Pokemon Crystal because I love the Johto music. It's just phenomenal and I feel like it's a very underrated region in general. And I just love the more simple and more laid back gameplay. And it's just a lot more pleasant to play again and again, not having to worry about knowing what natures do what and just enjoying the journey more. Matthew asks, I live in England and we are taking quarantine seriously. I'm guessing you live in America, so how is quarantine there? As for me and my family, we basically stay inside literally all day. The only person who ever goes outside is my mom, and even then, she is just sticking to online shopping as of late, so... Yeah, me and my family are just stuck inside all day. Which is a lot more than you can say for most other Americans, I think, if the news or anything go by over here. People think it's safe, but trust you me, being out there, especially inside buildings, is a biohazard. Mail guy asks, How are you? Hungry. I'm waiting for my mom to finish making some chicken on the grill. Shivan Nagaral and JJR100 ask, What was your first Pokemon game and where did you get the inspiration to make videos? What are your future goals for the channel? What kind of college did you go to? My first Pokemon game that I legally owned was Pokemon Platinum. My inspiration to make videos actually came from watching iCarly and seeing how fun it looked to be on the internet and as far as what videos I wanted to make, Chucka Conroy was a big reason for that and you know, just being a huge fan of Nintendo in general. Future goals for my channel, I'll admit to be very happy with where my channel is right now, but if I had to have any goals, um, I mean 100,000 subscribers would be pretty sick, but if I'm talking about goals that I can actually have control over, it would just be to upload and make sure I keep to my schedule, which is to upload every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that's ultimately what, ultimately what I think is the most important thing I can do as a goal because I feel the consistency is very important when you're on YouTube and you have to get your audience to trust you somehow. So what better way to start than just by uploading and, you know, actually showing up. At the end of the day, I just want to be able to have people find my channel worth watching. And as long as I accomplish that, I'm satisfied. Do you use an emulator? Yes. First was my Wii U, but now I use Visual Boy Advance and Desmumi, depending on the game I'm playing. Ish Hanroy Chowdhury asks, What got you into Pokemon challenges? Why are your challenges especially hard? Why not make it easy on yourself? Where are you from? How old are you? I was inspired to challenge run Pokemon specifically from watching Pikachu play to do Pokemon Red using only a single diddle in battle. And I was honestly amazed at seeing just how he managed to beat the entire game with one. That was the start, but I also saw him play through Crystal, and even though he couldn't do it, it really clicked with me. I just wanted to know how far certain Pokemon could go. 
there are others who looked to my inspiration like Jake McCoolay and Jeffrey Urie as well, who may be lesser known, but some of their challenges likewise also were what pushed me to want to make challenges my own. And it's how my Zubat only challenge was born. As far as why I make my challenges harder than most others would, the biggest reason is simply that I find harder challenges more fun. Like, anyone can be the challenge by using bag items in battle. And some people may prefer to see creative themes to challenges, but me? I'm much more interested in the strategy that someone can employ to make a challenge possible, if it's possible to begin with. Only those who risk going too far will ever find out just how far you can go. At the end of the day, if you guys know the answer, where's the fun in watching? I care more about the journey, not just the destination. And seeing how a challenge is accomplished is a lot more exciting than just an answer you can get by skipping to the end of the video. This also goes into why I don't make it easy on myself, which I actually have done multiple times already. Namely my Zubat and Wubat only challenges where I actively change my stats to make it easier on myself, and I felt like scum for doing it. I just couldn't in good conscience say I tried, and I feel like I'd fail you as a challenge runner if I take the easy way out, especially as a content creator. Besides, I have a mantra that says I redefine the challenge in challenge running. I'm no fraud. And lastly, I'm from Florida. I'm 23 years old, and I turn 24 next year in February. Bo asks, what was your favorite video to make? Definitely had to be my Shit Ninja only challenge to Pokemon Platinum. It was the first challenge I did where I felt like I was just being myself and expressing myself and how I feel while also doing a very difficult challenge I thought was long overdue being done by anyone. It also did a huge amount for my channel and it is my greatest evidence that quality trumps quantity. So trust me, make videos that people want to watch. Give people a reason to continue doing what they do. Be sociable and be an involved member in whatever niche you've wished yourself to be involved in. Growth will come to you and you will prosper like you likely should. Neth asks, most fun challenge so far? I'd have to say Pokemon Emerald using only a pair of Nidoran. I thought it was a really cute challenge in my opinion, and it got me to be really creative in how I deal with the abundant double battles in the game, all with a sacred bond of a mother and her son. Definitely was one of my most creative challenges and I'm really proud of how it panned out. Cheese it asks, what do you think of your very first video? Speaking of my very first video across any YouTube channel, I have very little to say beyond I'm glad I managed to do it before the end of 2012. But otherwise, I had no idea how capture cards worked, the frames dropped like mad, and I was using music from YouTube's library since the audio was so badly distinct, the video would end before the audio did. So, uh, not a great opinion, but even that was way better than my first video on this channel. That was just a dumpster fire. Didn't even know that the audio wasn't being captured from my dazzle, the quality was hot trash, I spent a lot of time in the beginning apologizing to people that I made a mistake in the recording and it was honestly just awful, an awful video. Nonetheless, I kept it up because at the end of the day, you see what I was before, you see what I am now, and you see how far I have actually come. And while on your journey on YouTube, I think remembering your humble beginnings is an important lesson to warrant keeping something like that up for others to learn from. Napkino asks, Lee's favorite Pokemon. I had a hard time thinking of an answer for this as I liked at least each Pokemon a little bit. And then I remembered that this existed, and I hate this thing. It's frail, it's weak, it's designed as better left as a dessert for Sharpedo, and it reminds me of a garbage holiday, Valentine's Day. I freaking hate love this. As well asks, who made your profile picture? Um, Sega, I guess? I just took this from a wiki about Rhythm Thief the Paris Caper, and I haven't played it, but I love the Emperor's Treasure, so I may as well just choose something that was close enough. Then Kitty asks, do you have a hobby other than YouTube? Here's the thing, I used to have other hobbies, but now I really don't. Especially now when I'm kind of just stuck indoors all day, and all I really have is my TV and my Wii U, as well as some other stuff like my 3DS. I mean, you could probably consider me doing some modding work behind the scenes a bit of a hobby since I used to love trying to mod Mario Kart Wii custom music, but aside from that, I really can't say I have any hobbies other than YouTube. Hack asks, any YouTuber you'd love to make a video with, and what YouTubers would you say have inspired you to start making content? Do you think that Nintendo would try to make a good Mario movie? 
honestly tough call. I have lately been involved in collaborations with lots of other Pokemon challenge runners, and even my dry break cameoed in it. But not speaking about Pokemon, and this may surprise you, but a person I always wanted to make a video with was actually TWD98. He entertained me for years just playing Mario Kart Wii, and he looks like he was just such a fun person to be around. He made so many creative challenges and themes to play the game around, and nowadays I probably wouldn't because he likewise and his friends have moved on just with their lives and don't have as much time to hang out anymore, but that's life. If we're talking YouTubers that inspired me to make videos, I'd say Chuka Conway is definitely the biggest reason for that. And as far as whether a Nintendo will make a good Mario movie, I am certain that Mario will be treated like their baby. They're going to make sure that that movie turns out as good as they possibly can make it. So yes, I do believe that they will try to make a good Mario movie. Chatman asks, what would you pinpoint as the exact thing you did to give yourself this upward trajectory? Definitely by forming relationships with people who make videos similar to what I make. I really was not able to capitalize on how initially popular these challenges were, speaking of my Pokemon challenges for the record, but becoming friends with people who did end up growing way bigger than I currently am helped a massive amount. I cannot thank enough Mr. Ding Dong Games for shouting me out and giving me that second chance to grow. Nabdoy asks, what is your favorite Pokemon generation of them all? I'd have to say Generation 4. Sinnoh was my home as Platinum was my first game, but I also have a lot of love for the Mystery Dungeon games, especially Explorers of Sky. Jim Fitzgerald asks, Which easy or short Nintendo game would you speedrun? Pikmin. I actually love watching speedruns like McKaggy play through the whole game in well under an hour, and he inspired me to try beating the game in as few days as possible but I am just not good enough to speedrun the game as my work is nowadays is only nine days. But that's definitely the game I want to speedrun the most. I used to be interested in Mario Golf Toastal Tour, but that game I just lost interest in. Kai Genix asks, what made you become a YouTuber? I love this question because listen, I have an insatiable desire to be admired and sought after for entertainment. At the end of the day, I want to be someone that people find worth watching and a personality that people can connect to and want to come back for. Even amidst the time I invest, sometimes the frustration is struggling to find out where I want to establish myself and the process of learning how YouTube works. I find it worthwhile just to seek out being someone that people look to for smiling. And YouTube is a fantastic avenue to make that happen with it being a free service where you can upload videos to potentially reach an audience of people around the entire planet. What inspires you to continue YouTubing slash being a YouTuber? Simply put, it's just getting more discovered by more and more people and building up that following to become more widely appreciated for my craft. So long as that's my motivation, I will always continue YouTubing. What was the most difficult video or challenge to make or do? Nick Boss. Challenge would have to be impossible, no doubt about that. Some moments in that challenge were just unfair, and it forced me to push my super guarding skill beyond its limits just to stand a chance. It being on a new TV so I had no muscle memory to work off of anymore did not help either. But it being my favorite game being done in, it was enough reason for me to stay determined and finish it regardless of how difficult it was. As far as the video to make, that easily would be my Shedinja only challenge. Not only for the challenge itself, but because it took me over a week to finish editing that whole video. And I wanted to make it mark the moment where I was going to be focusing a lot more on making videos, basically not just for myself, but that people would want to watch. I really wanted my editing to stand out here more than ever. Easy Quinn asks, What is the most difficult game you've played on a normal first attempt playthrough? Do you drink coffee or tea? Do you play an instrument or draw? Do you collect slash play in the Pokemon trading card game? Face reveal win. Do you plan an ever streaming of your live face? What streaming equipment do you use? How would you recommend someone to start streaming on Twitch? I have a hard time remembering first time playthroughs, but if there's one game that I remember kicking my butt a ton of the time, it's Sonic Heroes. I still haven't beaten that game yet, and I have very little motivation to go back to it because that game is just... I don't really find it fun, but 
That for sure would be the hardest game I've ever played in recent memory. I do drink both coffee and tea depending on the situation. I do not play an instrument, but I, I can sing, so I consider my body my own instrument. I cannot draw, and I don't have a hobby of doing it myself. And I have never been interested in the Pokemon trading card game, so that's a no. As far as a face reveal... You don't need to ask, mate. But don't expect me to do live streams with my face in it, because my laptop is just not powerful enough. Um, if you guys really want to see that though, I can have a PayPal in the description in this video, and if you donate enough money, I mean, then sure, but otherwise, I really don't think that it's ever gonna happen, so, I say don't get your hopes up. As for streaming equipment, I'm normally just stuck with my laptop, and that's really it. As far as when it comes to recording off my Wii U, I use an Abra Media, which I was recommended by my moderator on my Discord server, Neff, and that's all I really got. Oh, I also have my headset, but I don't really remember what it's what brand it is. I have to look it up later, I think. I'll probably leave it in the description down below, if you ask enough. Do you own a tarantula? Are you really into spiders? Is your real name Aaron? What inspired the name Arantula? Well, I answered the latter two questions, but for the first two, I do not, in fact, own a tarantula. I like spiders, but I really should not be around them because my mom also instilled in me some arachnophobia, even though I generally think that the enemy of my enemy, you know, like flies, is my friend. Count that. What's a good way to start as a YouTuber? Simply put, just get your foot through the door, make some videos, when you feel comfortable with them, upload them, and just get that initial experience going. And from there, just try to figure out what people are really looking for, what people are really thinking about. And if those same things are stuff that you're interested in too, make videos about those and try to build a community around that. And I think that you can end up becoming a very successful YouTuber if you also employ some best practices like researching search engine optimization, like keywords that YouTube will recommend to you if you try to type in something in their search bar. Like there are so many ways you can start off, but I think that ideally just starting small and just making some videos, having some fun with it is the best way to start. Otherwise you can get overwhelmed very easily. Huey the Bucket asks, do you like the white outlines in the newer Paper Mario games like Color Splash and Origami King? I honestly do not really care. <laughs> I mean, if I'll be honest, I definitely will complain about how the outlines were before in TVYD and other Paper Mario games, but Color Splash, I mean, for the sake of storytelling, if it's if you like, like children's book, it's fine. Otherwise, I'm honestly impartial to it. Greg Luther Odawa asks, what is your favorite and least favorite video games of all time? Favorite is easily Paper Mario for Thousand Year Door. Least favorite, if I had to pick a game that I've actually played, Paper Mario Sticker Star, just because I don't think it's a good game in general. I honestly don't even feel like it should be classified as my least favorite game because I don't like it at all. And I think that saying least favorite would imply that you at least liked it somewhat. Where are you from? Florida. Southern Florida. You know, the place where we have the wrestle of crocodiles. Please send help. What are your thoughts on Olivia, Bobby the bob -omb, Professor Toad, Kamek, and Bowser Jr. as partners in the Origami King, and who is your favorite out of the ones I mentioned? I don't keep up with Paper Mario the Origami King news at all, so I hardly know who Olivia is, but I think that she looks like the new Kirsty slash Huey, so that's all I can really say. Bobby the bob -omb, I have absolutely no opinion on him at all. I mean, we've had bob -omb's without fuses before in Paper Mario 64, and I think the only bob -omb that was an exception to that was Bombette, so again, I had no opinion on him. Professor Toad, he comes from his own game, so whatever. Kamek, I guess from Villain the Hero guy? I don't freaking know. I have no opinion on these partners in the sliders. But if I had to pick a favorite out of the ones you mentioned, I'd have to say Kamek. No contest. I love Kamek so much as a character. Even though I like Kami Koopa a lot more. Dio Brando asks, this is going to sound strange, but may you please one day make a video explaining the ins and outs of Pokemon challenges, 
how to do them, and most importantly, how to have fun while going through a Pokemon Challenge run and or a Nuzlocke. Also, I would ask about Mario as well, but I don't want to ask too much of you. Also, I know Mario and Pokemon challenges are fun and all, but have you ever thought of branching out and trying other game challenges? Well, to start, if you really want me to make a video on how to have fun and how to really make a challenge, I mean, sure. I don't Nuzlocke though, so I can't really help you with that though. As far as branching out in other games, I have tried to do as much with Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, but A, I'm not nearly as good at those games, and they also were not very popular, so I feel like if others aren't enjoying it as much and I'm not having as much fun with this as I am with Pokemon or Mario, it may not be worth continuing with. Jess asks, favorite video game to speedrun, if any, favorite boss from TTYD and Super Paper Mario, favorite music theme from any video game, what is your opinion on fandoms versus hatedoms, and to end off my question train, what is your Pokemon game top list? Thanks for indulging my selfishness talking to your questions. I do not speedrun any games, but if I did actually get to speedrun any game, it would probably be Pikmin. Favorite boss from T2ID and Super Paper Mario? Um, T2ID would have to be the Shadow Queen because it's a very hard fight and it just feels very tense and I absolutely love the atmosphere. Super Paper Mario, I'd have to say my favorite boss from that game would be Ochunks. No, Mimi. I freaking love Mimi both as a character and as a boss because no matter how strong you get, she doesn't really get any easier. All it really does changes how much HP you have, so how many hits you can take, and I really like the design of that fight. Asking me to just pick one music theme that I like from all the video games I've ever played is just freaking cruel, but if I had to pick just one of them, I'd have to say the Phase 2 theme of Solaris from Sonic the Hedgehog 06. That is a freaking epic boss theme. Also, as somebody that does not pay attention to fandoms or hate thems, in fact, this is the first I've ever heard of what even a, a hate them is, I have no opinion, but I do think that it's better to love than to hate, so there you go. As far as the order of my Pokemon games from favorite to least favorite, I'd have to say that the first would be Crystal version because I freaking love Crystal to death. Then it would be Generation 3's Pokemon Emerald because I love that game to death too. Then I go back to my hometown being Generation 4's Pokemon Platinum. I'd afterwards say Black White, Black 2, and White 2 because I like them both about equally and I also really like those games a lot. And then I go with all the like the first versions of the games. I guess Sun and Moon, if I had to put it anywhere, I'd put it after those because I have a very hard time coming back to those games. Um, X and Y after that because I just was very unimpressed by those games in general. Um, and then at the very end of it all, I have to say Generation 1 because I at least saw my brother play it and I've never played Generation 8 so I can't rank that amongst these games at all. So that'd be my list. What is the most boring TTYD chapter in your opinion that is not either the prologue and chapter 2? I would have to say chapter 6 just because you're basically, it is the most hallway simulator of a game that is already full of hallways and suffers from hallway syndrome. And after you've already played through everything and you know all the twists and turns, there's like nothing to look back to aside from maybe s'more. So I would easily have to say chapter 6, 3 days of excess. Top locations of Pikmin 1 considering music, atmosphere, and difficulty? What's a game that you've played but don't think anyone else has? Favorite Spongebob episode? And what is your birthday? I have always been a fan of the Distant Spring, and I think that it takes all those categories because I find the music to be utterly hypnotic and enchanting. I think it's a very difficult level, especially with the spotty bull bears. Those can be really freaking hard enemies to kill because of how much Pikmin they can also eat, as well as some issues with the floor in the game, but that's besides the point. Um, in atmosphere, like, that kind of goes hand in hand with the music. It's phenomenal. A game that I've played, but I don't think anyone else has. Difficult to say because I feel like at least anyone that I can ever see has played a game that I've played, even if it's extremely obscure. Like I've seen people play Rhythm Thief and the Everest Treasure, so I don't think that's a question that I can actually answer. But of people I know, I guess Rhythm Thief, just because whoever I talk to, they don't seem to actually know the game even exists. So that's a pretty easy call for me to make. And my favorite SpongeBob episode is 
either band geeks or friend or foe but i've said friend or foe in the past on my old youtube channel in a list of my top 100 favorite spongebob episodes so it may be dated now but who knows i think that at least is still accurate and that's my birthday i was born on february the 4th on 1997 that's the year those are the questions i have to answer and that's the end of this video thanks for watching you guys and now do this answer this question down below what's your favorite type of food to eat for me it's pepperoni pizza please remember to like and share this video and that's all from me see you next time